So today we're going to look at the decorator pattern and how we can use that in ASP.NET Core with Autofact. Now I wanted to talk about the decorator pattern because recently in some of my functional tests, I was having a bit of a scare with how I was setting up my connections to a database. And to explain this a little bit further, my tests actually use Autofact to resolve dependencies. And then they're supposed to be connecting out to test containers, which are going to be Docker containers spun up for my services that I need. Now in a testing environment, I never want my test to be able to connect out to the real database or other services. But because I'm using Autofact to resolve a lot of these dependencies, I'm relying on the configuration being spot on so that this works perfectly in production versus testing. And call me paranoid, but I just don't like trusting that things always work automatically. I'd like to have a little bit more confidence in what I'm getting myself into. But this was the perfect opportunity for the decorator pattern. And to explain this a little bit further, I was actually able to wrap my database connections that were being created in only my test environment to ensure that every time I would go connect out, that it would validate whether or not that was to production or to a test environment. So there's many practical use cases for using the decorator pattern, and I'm not gonna get into all of them because that would be impossible. But I think a common one that people would start to look at is logging. So if you had a logging infrastructure, being able to wrap your logger in something else. So what I wanted to do is walk through an example in Visual Studio of setting up something to do with logging in the decorator pattern using Autofact in an ASP.NET Core app. That was a mouthful, so let's jump over to Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio, I've just gone ahead and created a new ASP.NET Core web application. And I'm gonna walk you through how I'm setting up Autofac here. So just to explain a little bit, we're going to start with the NuGet package that we need. So I'm just gonna to go to my Solution Explorer and go over to the project to show you the package that I've included. And that's going to be autofac.extensions.dependency injection. So with that, if we walk through our setup for an ASP.NET Core app, and this is using minimal API, so there's not a lot of code and that's what makes this super awesome. We'll just quickly walk through how Autofact is configured here. And I should pause to mention that I like using Autofact personally. You don't have to use Autofact for dependency injection. It is in fact built in to ASP.NET Core. However, Autofact is my preferred way of doing dependency injection. I'm just really familiar with a lot of the methods on it and I like using it because it fits my style. So the first thing that we're going to be doing in our minimal API project is creating this builder from web application and calling create builder. These are just the args passed in from the command line. In this example, we're not actually using them for anything. And then from there, some of the magic that we require to actually get Autofac wired up is we have to call the code that we have highlighted from line eight to 15 here. And you can ignore this part for just a moment on line 12 and 13. And what we're looking at is calling the host property and then use service provider factory and then giving it an Autofac service provider factory. So this is going to hook in Autofac for us. And then after we can call configure services and then we can say services.addAutofac. What we have inside of here is actually configuring the container builder which is something specific to Autofac where we can register modules and other things to have our dependencies wired up. So I'm not gonna get into an extreme amount of details about how to use Autofac in the normal traditional sense. Um, I'm going to assume that you have a little bit of understanding about how to call registration methods on Autofac, but I'll touch on it just a tiny bit as we go through. So after we have this configured, and I will come back to lines 12 and 13 in just a moment, we're going to create the app by calling builder.build. And I just have this line 19 here because it came by default for when I was configuring this project just to use HTTPS. Next, we're gonna look at our route, which is extremely simple. I'm just providing the base route, so a forward slash. And what we're going to be looking at is an iMessage formatter. And we're going to want to resolve this from our registered services. So this is going to ask Autofac for an implementation of iMessage formatter. And this is a bit of a contrived example. I said I wanted to talk about logging a little bit, but I also wanted to show you the result right in the web browser instead of actually logging out somewhere else. So what we're going to be doing is actually just calling a format log message method on this interface. And then we're going to look at the implementation for that. So come back to that in a moment too. And then the last part is we just run the app. So it's very, very simple, just a single route. And really what the magic we're going to be looking at here is just calling this format log message method. So if we go look at that, we have a simple interface called iMessageFormatter. It just has this one method on it that we were just looking at calling. 
and the actual implementation of this is super simple in the base case. We're just going to return the actual message. So there is no formatting actually happening. So the string that gets passed in should be returned unchanged. It's pretty boring, but it's just to demonstrate the purpose of what I'm after here. If you're actually thinking about how your logging is set up and maybe you want to wrap that with a decorator, you might be able to insert your own formatting, for example. So before you actually log messages out, you might want to actually do something to them first. You might want to log to multiple places so you could have something like a T effect in your logging. So it could log to the console, log to a file, log to different services, that kind of thing. But you can use a decorator for that. And we'll look at that in just a moment. The final part in the base case here is really just setting up this logging module. So all that I'm doing is registering this type that we just looked at. And I'm saying that I want to register it as it's implemented interfaces which is just the I message formatter that we have up here. And then the last part is I'm saying that it's just a single instance. So this is a singleton and not the scary globally available, you know, static access singleton that you're always told to avoid in all of your coding. Uh, you know, it's like one of the first things you learn is an anti-pattern. We're not talking about that. We're just saying that every time someone tries to resolve this, it should only provide the same instance. Before I go run this application, I just wanted to scroll back up to the top and talk about lines 12 and 13, like I said. So normally what we would be doing is just saying container builder, register the module, and it's the logging module that we were talking about. But generally when I'm building applications, I like to register all the modules that are available. Um, this is going to be situational. So in my cases, I'm only ever dealing with modules that I've created that are going to be in the assembly that I'm dealing with, or I might go scan a directory and pull in all the assemblies and pull in all the modules from there. So this is just going to make our life a little bit easier when we go to add the decorator, because we won't even have to come add another module. And the reason I want to show this is because when we're talking about decorators, we're able to extend functionality without coming back to the core of the application to modify it. In my opinion, that's an ideal way to be able to do it, but there's no hard and fast rule. So if you wanted to manually register your modules, that's okay. If you wanted to add your decorator directly inside of this logging module, that's okay too. I'm not telling you how to do this one way or another. I just want to show you that this is how I like to do it so that I don't have to come back and modify this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this commented line. And now from here, let's go run it. And as we might expect, the result is a little bit boring. We're just hitting the default base route. And then we see hello world because our log formatter is not actually formatting anything. It's just returning the string that was built in. Okay, now that we have the boring part out of the way, let's go look at how we can decorate this and make it totally awesome. So from here, what I wanna show you is the code that I have at the bottom of this file that's been commented out and hiding from us. And we're gonna look at that right now and see why this is so cool. We're going to start with our new decorated message formatter. And again, it's a totally contrived example. I'm just trying to show you what you can do. And what we're going to be able to do in this case is take in a reference to the iMessage formatter. So if you think about this in the general case, our decorators are always going to be wrapping something and then providing functionality in its place. So this kind of pattern is going to be very typical where we have something that we're wrapping passed in. And because we're going to be using Autofac, you can register and resolve other services in the constructor here. So you have access to whatever's on the container. And then in this case, we can get super creative with how we want to format the message. In this case, I'm not super creative. All that I wanted to do was put decorated right in front of the same message that comes back from the inner one that we're wrapping. Now we have the flexibility to not put anything here. We could totally hijack this and say whatever we want. You could be calling other things to go format this in different ways based on other services that you had resolved from Autofac. You kind of have unlimited options here because what we're able to do at this point is technically intercept the things that are coming in by having this decorated message formatter in place of the original one. And again, if you extend the thought process here, if you think about wrapping loggers, or maybe you want to have different services wrapped in other things, you're able to intercept or technically totally replace other things. Going back to my example from the beginning, what I was able to do is if this was something like connecting out to a database, 
I was actually able to say, what's the connection string that we're using? Let me check to make sure it's safe. And if it's not, I can fail the test immediately and not actually allow database connections. So that was a very specific use case of a decorator being used in my testing scenarios, but the options are technically limitless. Now to make this work, we're going to leverage something from Autofact that's built in called Register Decorator. And I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit so it fits on the screen here, but the syntax for this is that we just call Register Decorator on our builder. So like I alluded to earlier, I do have a new module for this, but we could have jammed it in the original one as well. I just wanted to show that we could actually have this in a totally separate module. And then when we call Register Decorator, we're going to say as the first type argument, the wrapper or the decorator that we want to use and the second type argument is going to say basically when someone tries to resolve this service we want to decorate it with the first type parameter so in our case anytime someone tries to get an iMessage formatter and the original one that was registered was just the logger one the standard one then we're going to wrap it with this decorated one and autofact will take care of that magic for us and in fact, when it goes to create the decorated message formatter, it will pass in the one that it needs to wrap all for us automatically. And if we jump back to something that I talked about right near the beginning of this video, well, if you look back here, because I was able to actually say register assembly modules and just look at all the modules in the current assembly, the cool thing about this is I don't have to come back here and change this code at all. I don't have to go explicitly register another module for the new code I added. So if you think about this, I talk about plugin architectures a lot. And what I like about plugin architectures is that we can extend applications without having to touch the base application. This is a nice parallel to that because I'm trying to demonstrate here that we never had to come back and touch this code to go decorate our message formatter. And I'm gonna demonstrate that now by running the application. All right, it's slightly more exciting this time just because it says decorated in front and we know that that means it must be calling the decorator class before it's actually calling the format message. I admit it's a little bit of a boring example, but I hope you can see that we have this original message coming back from our standard one. And like we saw in the code, it's able to generate this part first and then in the string formatting, it inserts this text into one with a placeholder directly after the word decorated with a colon. And to reiterate, one of the most awesome parts about this is we never had to go back and change the core application. We literally just added a new class and a new module and everything was taken up for us automatically. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. And what we looked at was our ability to create decorators in an ASP.NET Core application using Autofact. And what we saw is that we don't actually have to go modify a core application when it's set up in a particular way. And that way we can go extend functionality by wrapping classes and we can either replace the functionality, we can use a version of it. The choice is yours. It's kind of, you know, seemingly infinite, but we can add this new functionality or change it without having to go modify the core original application. Now, if you structure things in a slightly different way, you can manually register your modules. There's nothing wrong with that. The choice is yours for how you'd like to do that. But if you use some of the methods I showed you today, you can actually have that taken up automatically. There might be cases where you don't want that because you want to have more control over what's being loaded, perhaps security reasons, or maybe versioning for DLLs and things like that. I'm not here to tell you the right or the wrong way to do that. Everything will be situational. But today we looked at the decorator pattern and I hope that you can find some interesting use cases in your ASP.NET Core apps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.